Angeles is a great place. Um, usually runs me between $75 and $100 for a used tank. You can buy them brand new. Um, I'm always looking for food grade plastic if possible. I'm definitely looking for something that was uh, organically used, not a petrochemical that may be toxic to my fish. So if I find that good source, I can rinse these out and start using them. Um, and this system, what you're seeing is uh, a tank full of tilapia and the media bed above. Um, and the media bed above, I'm growing mostly uh, cut and come again crops where I can harvest these leaves and come back next week and harvest again. So one of my favorite crops to do in aquaponics would be beet greens. All right, so the beet greens themselves are very nutritious and you can't find nice clean beet greens like this at the grocery store or the farmer's market. They're usually attached to a beet and they've got dirt all over them and insect holes all over them. So I could take this little system here and pick these every Friday, come back and pick again on Friday, come back and pick again Friday. So I do the same with the chives, Swiss chard is in here. I've got a crop, uh, Charles can get a little close up later, red vein sorrel in there. I do the same thing, I cut and come again. Um, again, the tilapia in here, this little system, because it's indoors, does need 100% supplemental light. I need to provide all artificial light for these plants. And so in this system, I'm using T5 fluorescence. Uh, around here at the college, we're using also LED technologies. Um, I use some old school metal halide lights as well. So we're looking to become more efficient with our lighting. But as you can see, the nutrition, the color of these plants, show you that the fluorescent light is really ideal for some of these microgreens or these vegetative crops. Um, the other thing you'll see in here that's a little different than most grows is I've got a lettuce that I'm letting go to seed. Um, I went through variety trials when I got here. Everybody should go through variety trials um, in their own environment. So I finally found one that we loved. It's nice and turgid. It's called Feinberg. Um, and when I went to reorder the seed, the company had stopped making this variety. Stopped making the seed. The company could not sell me anymore. Uh, they had zero seeds left on hand. And I had 10 seeds left here. So we took one to fruition. Now it's starting to seed. And my workers will come in here and pick the mature seeds, let the other ones still mature longer. And I collect them. And I'll get a nice container full of seeds that are viable. And there's a cleaning process to clean these up. But what you see here probably represents maybe 6,000 seeds. So now I've got the ones that I liked that aren't available in the market anymore. And if we want, our club can take these two, three, four generations and create an aquaponic seed that our club could kind of brand and sell. So this is a simple system with the bell siphon. So what you're seeing the water do during the video is to flood and drain. So the pump runs 24 seven. There's no solids filter on this system. So the little bit of fish solids that go into this grow bed, they're processed and the grow bed is a bunch of earthworms. So the earthworms will break them down as well. Um, because of the bell siphon in the back, this water level will rise, so it'll flood. Uh, once the standpipe is uh, hit, that water level, um, there's an, a restrictor on that bell siphon that creates a strong suction. So the water siphons back down, and so we end up in a flood and drain stage. It's flooding with nutrients and water, and it's draining, pulling oxygen back into the roots. Um, so this is great surface area. Uh, for our beneficial bacteria, um, so we have no problem with water quality. But the delicate balance on any of these systems is how much fish feed do you put in to how much plant area you have. So everyone's source water is going to be different, your protein level may be different in your fish feed, so I can't give you a general recommendation. What I can encourage you to do is do your own trial and error. So on a small system like this, I'm just trying to get perfect water quality for the fish. I'm trying to get perfect nutrients for the plants. So I need to find what feed input will do that. And through some trial and error on this small system, I feed this about 16 grams of fish feed a day. It costs me about four cents in fish feed a day to support this kind of bed. Um, so these are ideal for um, small scale systems. They can teach every principle of aquaponics that a big system might do. Um, schools, classrooms, um, I've worked in prison systems to put these in there. And they're just an integrated system that teaches everything that you may need to know uh, to scale up to a larger system. Okay, um, one more point I want to make on this is uh, the cost. So I can get this cost down if I can find used tanks and uh, maybe even used lights. I could get it down to a couple hundred dollars. 
one place you're going to get dinged is the material for your media. Uh, what, I, what you're looking at in my hand here is hydroton. It's a clay ball. Um, it's fired really hot. It's very inert. It's not going to break down in your system. But if I filled this grow bed with just the clay balls, I may be looking at about $250 worth of clay balls. Um, we like the clay balls because as we work, especially with cut and come again crops, it doesn't hurt my hands. It's nice and smooth. But to save money, what we did is the bottom two thirds of this, I filled with very cheap hummus. So I go to the landscape company and I'm choosing a media also that's inert, that's not gonna break down. We don't want something that's full of carbonates that's gonna shoot our pH up to eight, nine, or 10. Um, so I'm looking for something inert that's not gonna break down. Before I use a media like this, I do use uh, what we call the vinegar test. I can drop any media that I want into a container of vinegar and I'm watching for the bubbling, the neutralizing of that carbonate. Um, if I see uh, aggressive bubbling, that's a media I'm not gonna use. So before I use something like this, I did test it in the vinegar uh, solution. It did not bubble. Um, some of it went into the pore spaces, but it showed me it wasn't a carbonate, and I was able to use this and save a lot of money by filling two thirds with the cheaper material and one third with a nice smooth rock. Okay. Um, one thing about these bell siphons is you do need the right flow rate. So I've got water constantly going into this grow bed, creating the flood and drain. Uh, but you do need to tweak this. If it's too fast, it's not going to give you the flood and drain. And if it's too slow, it's not going to get you the flood and drain. So on these pumps, before it reaches the grow bed, I have a bypass valve that allows me to regulate the flow. And then I'm monitoring for my flood and drain. Um, down on, on the riser, this is where my bypass valve is, if you want to capture that. And then Charles, if you're able to, um, there's the drain back. You know, I, I'll sit there, you'll see it off for a while, and then you'll see it kick on. Um, you're not going to do the whole thing because it's a seven minute <laughs> drain cycle. But this is important here is this, uh, this bypass valve to regulate. Um, yeah, so what you're seeing down there is this bed is in the drain cycle. It's about to finish the drain. Uh, once it gets down to the bottom, that siphon is broken, and the bed starts moving back into a flood cycle. Uh, the small valve here allows me to regulate this flow rate just to the right flow. Again, I don't want it too fast or too slow, so I can adjust my valve here a little bit. Maybe your aquarium pump that's in here will get clogged with a little bit of feces. That throws off your flow rate. So if you don't see the flood and drain on a regular basis, you can just make your fine adjustments here. Typically, once it gets set, it's set um, for good, but occasionally you may have to tweak with it.